I'm going to be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just come up from our competitive analysis study. I spoke with um, our contact, and they've already worked with uh, Energy 3 of our existing industries, so I have received feedback from that from them. They'll be contacting three more to get more feedback from them on what we can do as a community to be more competitive and how we are doing business here from an existing industry perspective. Um, we've already completed the MSA analysis, so that portion of the study is done. Um, now what we're working on is the com incentive comparisons from communities that uh, we're being compared to. And that will consist of operating costs, labor um, costs, our incentive um, policy, and how we can move forward with that. So that's kind of where we are in the process, so we should have a complete report soon. Uh, which leads me to one of our topics, and you all have a lovely stick it, sticky note on your um, agenda so that I wouldn't forget to bring this up. But what I would like to do is have him come present that presentation as a board meeting on September 8th. Um, I will not be able to make it for the September board meeting due to um, a conference that I'll be at, <coughs> but wanted us to do this and have it as a community presentation. We'll move forward and look at that a little bit further, but wanted to see if all of you could be available on the morning of September 8th. Morning at what time? Um, I can be flexible on time, so um, we can talk afterwards and see if, like, what your schedule is and how we can work through that. So if that date works for you, and if we need to do it in the afternoon, we can look at it in the afternoon. I'd like to get it over with in the morning, but just let me know. And, um, I'll so how long will that block a period? I mean, is it a two-hour meeting? Is it, I mean, how long will the presentation? An hour. And then have a board meeting? Um, I <coughs> was thinking we would do a board meeting at 30 minutes, like do our really quick board meeting in the beginning, and then do the presentation at the end from the hour. So, so maybe an 10, hour and 12, a half. 10, block out 10, 12, something like that, or what would be the proposal? Um, I don't think Jerry can be here. Jerry would not be able to make so it that morning. Okay. So it's just to make so to count how many of you I could have. And, and I responded yeah, within, I mean, I know it was last minute. Yeah, just let me know. I can do it. I'll respond. The afternoon could be problematic depending on if you move it to the afternoon. So I can definitely do it. Okay. Um, so uh, just to talk about that, also recently was just in Atlanta for our Georgia Economic Development. Um, and I don't know if Tom wants to elaborate on this, but we'll be looking into what's called GASB tax abatement disclosures. And so we're looking into finding out what that means and how it affects authorities. And I think a lot of that, that just came down to us on Friday. So a lot of that is up for interpretation. But um, Tom Davis has been working diligently on finding out what that means and how that would affect us. Um, I'll be in Atlanta at the end of this week um, meeting with our state allies and presenting our grad sites to them and what their attributes are and how they can utilize those for projects. Um, another initiative that we've started, and this was approved in the budget, is we have, uh, we're partnering up with a group called ROI Vision, and they'll be working with us on doing some lead generation. So we are starting that process, and we'll start that next month. Uh, I'm sorry, next week. Uh, and that concludes my report. Um. BSU and facilitating the, okay. the physics degree, is that still working on? Yeah, so that's still working on. Yeah, I, I didn't mention that, I'm sorry. Um, so, um, as you recall, we did our workforce development initiative a couple of years ago. One of the things that came out of that was we don't have a logistics degree. degree. Well, I've been working with Dean Plumley at Boyd College of Business and his professors and supporting them in <coughs> helping to establish this degree so that we could possibly have it in effect for 2016 at some point. Um, but one of the things that we're doing is partnering them up with our existing industries because logistics and supply chain management is changing and the technology behind it and what these existing industries' needs are and how we can match that degree based on their feedback. So we have meetings coming up this week or next week, next week um, with some of our existing industries to sit down with their professors and talk through that. Um, and then one of the other things we're doing is using our contacts at the Georgia Ports Authority to also partner them up to give them feedback as well on what that degree should look like moving forward. Um, and so that's moving along nicely. And then I, I will say this, um, Megan mentioned Stita, I didn't talk about this, but we were, um, Fortunate to have the Georgia Department of Economic Development Centers for Innovation and Manufacturing 
we spotlighted STETA, which for those of you who don't know is very highly automated. Um, and they get extremely excited about everything that they do out there and the capital investment that they make on a regular, um, regular um, on a daily basis. But also the type of people that they employ. Um, he just hired, I think, the number one engineer, automotive engineer um, here to come work at Steda in Alaska. So um, very, uh, I guess, very qualified workforce that he has. Um, but we posted them and we worked with South America, so there's a lot of opportunities for assistance that we'll be working with. Them. No, Mr. Copeland, do you have any commentary or questions for this? Of course. As to the logistics program, they are very excited about it over there. In fact, the miner is already in place, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, they are really happy that you work with them and we're excited about that major. 